This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. And today I wanted to talk about trading altcoins to get more Bitcoin. Is this a good idea? I often see this in my comment section, quote unquote, make your money in altcoins, then move the value to Bitcoin. Other people say buy altcoins at the start of a bull market because they'll pump harder and end up making you more money that you can eventually convert to Bitcoin. And I think this is, in fact, it sounds like a very hardworking thing to do that someone who's ambitious would do. But I think, in fact, it is one of the stupidest things that you could do. And after the, watching this video, I think you will agree with me. So here's some of the caveats. You actually have no idea when the Bitcoin bull market has started. You may think that you do, but you don't. I have no idea either. No one really knows. And in, in addition, you have no idea when the Bitcoin bull market will end. And when it does end, even if alts have pumped much harder than Bitcoin, they will fall extremely sharply. And I think it's delusional to think that you'll know the exact ending of the bull market and you'll know when to get out of alts. The other thing, you have no idea if the four-year cycle will repeat itself again this time around. And when I keep saying you have no idea, I should include myself in that group. I actually have no idea when the bull market starts, when it ends, and when the whether the four-year cycle will repeat itself again this time around. Will altcoins, will other crypto pump harder than Bitcoin? This time may be different in 2023 and 2024 because we have this time an SEC that is extremely hostile to altcoins and crypto casinos. We've seen what's happened to CZ and Binance. We've seen what's happened to many, many crypto projects. We have an SEC that may not allow venture capitalists to pump and dump this time around. At this point, I'm sure someone in the comments will be saying, but U.S. regulators don't rule the world, you narrow-minded American. They can't stop crypto. We can keep doing this everywhere else in the world. I would encourage you to ask CZ of Binance that same question, whether he agrees with your statement now that he is under house arrest in the U.S. This was someone from a completely different jurisdiction who was a billionaire many times over, and somehow he ended up getting ensnared by the long arm of U.S. regulators. So I don't think you should underestimate this as well. Here's another reason that this time may be different. A BlackRock and other spot Bitcoin ETFs that could have hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars of inflows that are going, at least initially, just to Bitcoin and nothing else for now. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to hit the subscribe button. That really helps out the channel and its reach. Hit the like button, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member. That would really help me out. Here's the question. Will the SEC allow a Cardano or Ethereum spot ETF if they are also at the same time preparing to sue them? We don't know. This is a reason that Cardano and Ethereum could massively, massively underperform Bitcoin as all these capital flows are going into Bitcoin through the BlackRock spot ETF, but they're not going into Cardano or Ethereum because there is no BlackRock spot ETF for them. I don't know if Bitcoin will outperform altcoins, other crypto this cycle. However, one thing that I'm 99% sure of is that Bitcoin will go up forever in US dollar terms, in Euro terms, in Yen terms, in Australian dollar terms, in all fiat terms over the long term. And I think it will also go up against every other asset in the world, real estate, gold, bonds, stocks, etc. So the question is, do you feel lucky? Do you think that you can outtrade that, that outperformance by Bitcoin over the long term? I don't think I can outtrade that. And I hope to start and run a multi-billion dollar hedge fund, as well as trading my own money successfully for over 25 years. And I don't think I can outtrade Bitcoin, which is why I stopped making courses and videos about trading. And I started making videos about hodling Bitcoin, which I think will have much, much higher returns than anything else that you can do with your money over the coming decade. The other thing is Bitcoin makes big moves up just a few days every year. And if you miss out on even one of those days, your investment returns will trail Bitcoin. This is why it's very important to always be in Bitcoin and not be jumping in and out. Here's another problem. If you hold a position in an altcoin or crypto for less than a year, at least in the U.S., and you can check your local tax law, at least in the U.S., you will owe short-term capital gains taxes, and those are at your marginal tax bracket for your for your income. And so these will massively eat into your return. So for example, if you buy crypto XYZ at 100 and sell it at $200, you may owe 40% or more if you're in the top tax bracket and you've held this asset for less than a year. You can end up paying these very, very costly short-term capital gains taxes. And as a result, when you decide to go back into the crypto market, you have less money to play with because you have paid that 20, 30, 40% short-term capital gains tax. And in other words, that means that's more like you bought the crypto at 100 and sold it at 100 
and 60. Meanwhile, while you are pursuing this trading strategy, your funds might end up getting hacked or stolen or frozen while sitting on the exchange in, this, in these various crypto positions. If you've been doing this very successfully for many years and your assets were on FTX or on BlockFi, you ended up getting completely wrecked, even if you were a very good trader. Because holding assets, holding even fiat on some of these exchanges and certainly holding crypto can be extremely risky and you can make wake up one morning having been rugged or having had your account frozen and you might have to wait for years to gain liquidity as people who had money at FTX, crypto at FTX or BlockFi are learning to their dismay. We're at a really unique point in time and this is why I went to all the trouble of changing even the name of my company from Trader University to Bitcoin University because buying Bitcoin today is a once in a lifetime opportunity. This is not going to come again. So don't screw it up by getting fancy or overestimating your trading abilities. You're not as good at trading crypto as you think you are. And you've, if you've been lucky so far, take that luck and roll everything into Bitcoin and lock in your gains. I, trust me, you are not going to be the guy who buys Solana on 1231 2022 and sells it on 12 5 2023 for a big gain. In fact, you're probably actually just going to be the guy who wrote Cardano or Hex or one of these other uh, ship coins down the whole year, all of 2023, and completely missed out on Bitcoin's rise. Here's yet another problem. Let's just say, let's assume that your trading execution is flawless. You're a very experienced trader, which you probably aren't. Let's say also that you don't get rugged by a broken smart contract or some other uh, problem at the exchange or with the cryptocurrency itself. Let's also say that you still outperform Bitcoin on a post-tax basis. So here you're doing everything right. This is quite unlikely that it happens, but maybe it happens to some of you. Then there's still a reasonable chance that you won't be allowed to convert your fiat winnings into Bitcoin and withdraw them from the exchange. Exchanges worldwide are throttling down the amount of Bitcoin that people can buy and withdraw. The self-custody window for self-sovereign Bitcoin may be rapidly closing. And the question is, will you still be, still be holding your fiat profits on a crypto exchange when high inflation hits and you watch the purchasing power of your fiat profits melt away and you're not able to withdraw in time or even convert them into Bitcoin? This happened to people in Argentina over the past few years who didn't convert their fiat, their local currency, their Argentine pesos to US dollars in time. The Bitcoin exit is closing and it's being closed by regulators and by governments in many, many places. So the real question is, even if you're a highly profitable trader, at the time you decide to exit, will you still be able to grab your Bitcoin and get it off the exchange and get out in time? This is some question, and every day that you wait means that the probability of this happening is much lower. I remember it was just about a year ago, a little over a year ago, everyone was talking about how Ethereum, by moving to proof of stake, was going to flip Bitcoin and people were quite convinced of it. Of course, it didn't happen. Bitcoin has massively outperformed Ethereum since the day that Ethereum moved from proof of work to proof of stake. Bitcoin is up over 100% and Ethereum is only up a little more than 50%. And Ethereum is nowhere close to flipping Bitcoin or flipping Bitcoin. Ethereum has a market cap of 200 and call it 260 billion, while Bitcoin has a market cap of almost 780 billion. So it looks like the merge wasn't enough to flip Bitcoin and nothing else really will be. People are rapidly losing interest in Ethereum and a lot of the interest is moving into other even more centralized coins like Solana. You really don't want to be the guy whose grandchildren have to sadly recount how he bought a dusty lot in the Nevada desert when he could have been buying a beachfront property in Malibu in 1950. Don't be the guy who owned Cardano or Hex in 2023 instead of Bitcoin. Also, don't be that guy who buys a proof of stake altcoin when the SEC is going on a rampage as it is now, and you buy this proof of stake altcoin just weeks before the project gets sued in late 2023 or early 2024. That's a really tragic place to end up because you are so close. You're so close to the truth. You are so close to the apex predator of money and other assets, which is Bitcoin, and yet you are so far away owning Hex or owning Cardano is uh, somewhat close to Bitcoin in one sense, but in another sense, it's so, so far away. And uh, it's a, it really is like buying a dusty lot in Nevada when you could have had a beachfront house in California instead. The decisions that you make today will have a huge impact on whether you and your family survive the coming financial upheaval as the wheels come off the US dollar global system, the current fiat financial system. So choose wisely. Don't choose crypto. Don't choose fiat. 
choose Bitcoin. Choose the asset that people who are much smarter than you are choosing. People like Michael Saylor and Ricardo Salinas who are buying Bitcoin. You have to ask yourself, do you really think that you're smarter than they are? The chances are that you are not, and I'm certainly not myself. Have you put in the thousands of hours of research that they have? Probably not. Or instead, are you just choosing to follow some idiot on Twitter who's probably being paid by some crypto company to promote to promote the very crypto that you're buying with your hard-earned money? So instead of following geniuses and billionaires like Michael Saylor and Ricardo Salinas, instead you're following someone, some idiot on YouTube or some idiot on Twitter. So choose Bitcoin instead. Get on the winning team now before it is too late. If you want to read more about Ricardo Salinas, who has a net worth of a mere $13 billion, I'll link to this interesting article uh, in the description notes below. Ricardo Salinas giving very good advice, I think, here. You should buy Bitcoin because they aren't making any more of it. There will only be 21 million Bitcoin. So now we're at the point in the video where you've made your decision. If you think you're gonna, if you're gonna ignore all of this, you're gonna keep trading altcoins to think that you're gonna make more Bitcoin, you've basically failed the IQ test. You're failing uh, to get on the life raft. And that's a very sad thing, but of this is gonna happen, unfortunately, to a lot of people. A lot of you at this point though in the video are probably saying, what should I do with my altcoins now? I wanna get out, I've been convinced by this argument, but I still have a loss on these positions. And my response would be, and this is what I've put in many comments on YouTube, of course you have a loss, these coins are garbage. You've been holding garbage and garbage trends towards zero over time. The longer you hold on to garbage, the poorer you will become, but not all is lost. Even great assets are trending towards zero against Bitcoin, so you don't even wanna hold great assets or garbage. You wanna hold Bitcoin, the apex predator of assets. So if you have a losing portfolio of crypto, one way to think about holding a crypto position or really any other losing position is to ask yourself whether you would buy them today at today's price with fresh money. If not, this can be an indication that you're really just price anchoring, you're too focused on your cost basis, and this can be an indication that you shouldn't be holding the position anymore if you wouldn't add to it with fresh money today because the market doesn't know the history of your trading. All it knows is what it's valuing the asset at today. So that's one way of thinking about this. Another way is to, to approach this is just to slowly sell off your altcoins, your other crypto, maybe one one hundredth of the position every day for a hundred days or something like that. You don't have to make it quite as dramatic and drawn out as that. But you sort of cost average out of alts and cost average into Bitcoin at the same time. Be sure to consult a tax advisor if you're going to do that. Chances are though, if you if you have a loss on your crypto that you'll be able to use it to offset future gains on other investments. Again, this is just my two cents. This is not investment advice and I'm not a financial advisor. But I would what I would suggest is that you just keep learning about Bitcoin. Make sure you do your homework before you enter it. I have thousands of videos at this point about Bitcoin that you can watch and learn more. And the more you learn about Bitcoin, the more you expand your mind, this will give you the strong hands that you need to weather the volatility and all the FUD and all the attacks that come with holding Bitcoin because hodling Bitcoin is not easy, but the more educated you are, the more you understand how it actually works, the easier it becomes to hodl it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching and I'll see you in the next video.